you must be wondering why I am playing this dino game, right? Because the title of the video says that prototypical inheritance. But don't worry, you are on the right video. So can you see here that my game is still going on? It is not showing me game over, right? So this all I have done with just a very simple trick in JavaScript. We all know that this dino game is completely built on Google Chrome, right? So we can, we can do some tricks with that. And you can amaze your friends and colleagues with this simple trick, right? And to do this, I have just used prototype. Yes, that we can do with the help of prototype. That's why I'm showing you this small game here. So in the last video, we have already learned about the prototype, right? We have discussed how, what is prototype and how you can add some methods and property in the prototype, right? So let me show you one trick for this as well so that you can understand prototype very easily. So here it also has a prototype property and there are lots of methods that we have in on this prototype, right? So you can see here we have lots of methods that we have. Stop, start. Similarly, we have one function which is called game over, which basically execute as soon as your dinosaur, you know, hit to something, it execute that function and at the end, so this function will return your total score on the screen. So now we are just overwriting this function and as of now I'm just returning simple empty function. So now when this function will call it will not do anything. So in that case your game will never get ended. And that's why when I'll do this you can score unlimited. Your game will never end. Interesting right? So this is the power of prototype. Now that's all for this trick. I just wanted to show you just to let you know that how you can play around with other things as well when you know the concepts very clearly. Okay. Now let's move to the today's discussion and that is prototypical inheritance. Prototypical inheritance is probably one of the most confusing topics for the people who are basically coming from any server side languages. Basically you can say class based language. Either it is Ruby, C sharp and Java because the way we implement inheritance in class based language it is completely different the way we handle it in JavaScript. The concept of inheritance will remain same that when your class wants to inherit some methods and properties from some another class. So in that case we do it with the help of inheritance. But the way we implement it, it, it is different. Now in EX6, we also have class based concept in JavaScript, right? We are not talking about that as of now in this video. I'm just talking about how we used to handle inheritance in JavaScript when we have constructor functions. So you just need to understand that basically the way we handle inheritance in JavaScript and in class based language, uh, the difference comes the way it established the relationship, right? So whenever we say class based inheritance, there we have a is a relationship and when we say javascript javascript basically works on has a relationship it, it's a composition so let me show you how you can handle the inheritance in javascript it's quite easy as we have already discussed in the last video how we can work with prototype okay for an example suppose we have one function let's say it as a phone and this function has some properties and method so i'm just assuming as of now that it has a model number property and it has one method that says that get model number so here I am saying this dot model number okay now suppose we have another function as well which will may be a Samson and this function will also have its own methods and properties right so this function will also have model number as of now I'm just putting some random thing here of course it's not a valid model number but just for example and it has one function that says latest feature okay so as of now nothing different right so now I assume like this Samsung function has its methods and properties right so I want to use this get model number function on this Samsung constructor function so ideally I can create this get model number function inside this constructor function as well the way we have created latest feature that's where the reusability comes in the picture right we should reuse the code so here we can implement some sort of relationship between Samsung and phone because Samsung is a kind of phone right 
So Samsung has a phone feature. So here we can do this with the help of prototypical inheritance. So to implement prototypical inheritance, all you have to do, you just need to use this Samsung and it will have this prototype, right? We'll do something like this. We will initialize its constructor with phone class. So here we have established prototypical inheritance between Samsung and phone. So now whenever we create any object of Samsung class here or Samsung constructor function here. So in that case, its prototype will also hold the detail of phone. And whatever we have defined in this phone constructor function, we can access it in the Samsung as well. So now let's check this one. So if I try something Samsung dot prototype, so you can see here, I'm able to access get model number function which idly not inside the Samsung, which is inside phone. And it is happening because I have done prototypical inheritance. So what I can do now, I can create one object of this Samsung class. And here I can say obj dot get model number. And can you see here, it is returning me the model number. So can you see here, I'm using this object, object which is pointing to Samsung. So here, this will point to my this object. So that's why this dot model number is this one. And we are executing get model number, which is inside this phone. So now when I'm running here, this dot model number, at this point of time, the value of this is not this one. It is taking the value of this from Samsung. So Samsung has a model number of this. That's why it is returning this one. And likewise, I can access its own method, which is this latest feature. So it will work the way it is working. So if you try to access the execution, so when a method is called instance of Samsung, right? So JavaScript first check Samsung object to see if the method exists in the Samsung. If it doesn't, then JavaScript then goes into the phone object contained within the Samsung and check to see if the method exists there. If it doesn't, JavaScript will continue to the prototype of phone class and so on until it finds a value or run out of prototype. That's we have already discussed in our previous video, how basically prototype, prototype chain works, right? So first it will find out Samsung, does it have any this get model number function? If so, it will give the output from here. Otherwise, it will check its prototype. So Samsung has a prototype which is pointing to phone. So it will check in the phone. This is how you implement prototypical inheritance in JavaScript. This distinction between is a and has a is a critical difference between classical inheritance and prototypical inheritance. So keeping this difference in mind will make your JavaScript life much easier. So this is all about today and it was very simple and straightforward topic, right? I hope you liked this video. If you liked it, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe my channel. I will see you in the next video with more interesting topic. Till then, keep learning and stay safe.